So we'll just backtrack a little bit. Yeah. We were just talking about counterweights on the crankshaft. Yeah. And I have seen um, some machine shops do knife edging on crankshafts. Yep. So what was the, um, so obviously the benefit to that would just be lighter weight, lighter weight in your reciprocating mass. But Ro you, what, rotating, rotating. Right, sorry, the rotating yeah, mass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, all that means is you just can't rev it as high. So you have to keep your RPM low, is that correct? Um, so, so sometimes, sometimes um, manufacturers will actually produce a crankshaft that is over counterweighted. A lot of, a lot of guys will knife edge a crankshaft and they don't understand the repercussions of what they're doing. They don't understand that their balance factor is going out um, and they believe that a harmonic damper will actually correct that problem, it won't. You have to consider that when your piston and rod are traveling up and down, or and your rod is essentially traveling, traveling like this, your counter mass is doing the opposite. So if your counter mass isn't reacting to the mass of your connecting rod and piston, you're gonna have a period of where essentially your rod is wanting to throw. It's sort of like, how to, how to say, this is where like boxer engines, are, like you look at Subaru or Porsche, they're horizontally opposed. So as the pistons travel out from each other, they're counteracted. So when they come in, they're counteract, the crankshaft is counteracting and the rod and piston mass of the opposite side is counteracting. She's full. Sounds like it's gonna explode. She's full. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, the mass is counteracting each other. So the counter masses on the crankshaft don't need to be as high. But when you've got a motor that is in line, you have to ha you rely on that counter mass to counteract the balance factor of the piston and rod combination traveling up and down. So when people knife edge them, they are people that are looking at other factors like windage. So they might have like, you know, aeration in the oil and they believe it's the, the very blunt side of a crankshaft uh, counterweight traveling through the, you know, aerated oxygenated oil that's floating around as a, as a gas inside the crankcase. What they're trying to do is cut through that. So they believe that factors like cutting through the air increases the engine speed. So the engines can rev up quicker. Uh, lightening the crankshaft makes the engine rev up quicker. But at what cost? The cost of the balance factor being incorrect. But normally when you're doing a knife edge crankshaft, you're also looking at your your piston rod combination. So if I was to, if I wanted to not knife edge a 4A crankshaft, I'd be doing this to a crankshaft and I'd be knife edging, knife ed I'd be weighing it and I'd be saying, what is the weight that's falling over this side? Knife edging it and then comparing it against the piston rod combination that I would be using. I would measure how much material I've taken before my balance factor starts traveling too far away from what's acceptable. So currently you can go to a the easiest way to tell what the balance factor of an engine is, is this was, it doesn't particularly matter what it was, what type of crankshaft, it's a 42 mil 4A crankshaft. So I would be looking at a silver top 20 valve, small port 4A, late model big port 4A. And I'll be looking at the piston, weight, piston and rod combination weight on this crankshaft. And that would be a good starting point for a balance factor of seven and a half thousand to 8,000 RPM. Anything more that I want to increase the RPM by, I'd be looking to lighten up that piston and rod, but I definitely wouldn't be taking any weight off here. A black top 20 valve is the exception. You have a lightweight rod. So theoretically, if your balance factor on an up, uh, on the, the black top 20 valve from factory, they rev higher. They have a higher RPM limiter than the silver top 20 valve. So if you were to then knife edge the crankshaft, you would have to drop down the RPM limiter because obviously Toyota's worked out, if our balance factor is this, the RPM limiter is safely allowed to be at this. Why would a manufacturer allow you to rev an engine further than what's acceptable to the point where you're risking de destroying the engine? They have to warrant an engine from factory. So they were allowing you to rev it harder because they had lightened the piston and rod combination up. So realistically, knife engine to me, personally, I want the extra mass because I know for a fact I'm putting a stronger rod and piston on that crankshaft. So I want the extra mass. So knife edging to me is not something I consider. And you're also spinning it to 10,000, did you say? 
Which one? Uh, the your black top, twenty in the, the twenty. Yeah, the one, the one in the car now, ten thousand to ten yeah. to ten two. So you need that mass. I no, want that yeah. mass. Yeah. yeah, because I know my balance factor isn't correct. Yeah. But I didn't have an option. If I was to cr custom design a crankshaft, which I will be for my after this engine, I'll be doing an, a short motor okay. to replace that one. Yep. Um, that will be the seven A block, but it will have a custom crankshaft. Right. Where it will have more more counterweight. Okay. Well, that'd be it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any engine related questions that you'd like to ask Matt, leave them down in the comment section. And next time I'm in the workshop with Matt, I'll fire up the camera. And as long as your questions are relevant, I'll be sure to ask him and we'll be making a video on it. So head on down to that comment section, leave us a question and we might just answer it in the next video. And while you're there, don't forget to hit that thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks guys.